Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The UK has confirmed it is supplying Ukraine with long-range missiles it requested for its fight against invading Russian forces. The Storm Shadow cruise missile has a range of over 250 kilometers, according to the manufacturer. The weapons will give Ukraine new capabilities as it prepares a counteroffensive against Russia. They are fired from aircraft, so the longer range means Ukrainian pilots will be able to stay further from the front lines. Once launched, the Storm Shadow drops to low altitude to avoid detection by enemy radar before latching onto its target with an infrared seeker. Mr Deputy Speaker, as I've said many times in the past, we simply will not stand by while Russia kills civilians. We have seen what Ukrainians can do when they have the right capabilities. Today I can confirm that the UK is donating Storm Shadow missiles to Ukraine. Storm Shadow is a long-range, conventional-only precision strike capability. It complements the long-range systems already gifted, including HIMARS and Harpoon missiles, as well as Ukraine's own Neptune cruise missile and longer-range missions elsewhere gifted. Israeli airstrikes have killed the head of Islamic Jihad's rocket force in Gaza, part of an operation that has killed 25 people, including women and children, this week. Egypt was set to host senior Islamic Jihad official Mohammed al-Hindi in Cairo later in the day, part of mediation efforts to end the fighting. Ali Ghali was the fourth senior Islamic Jihad commander killed since Israel began striking Gaza in pre-dawn raids on Tuesday. The death toll in the raids includes at least five women and five children. Turkish presidential election candidate Muharrem Ince, one of four contesting Sunday's vote, says he has withdrawn in a potential boost to the main rival of President Tayyip Erdogan. In a statement, Ince blamed an apparent smear campaign against him as the reason behind his decision to pull out from the race. Before his withdrawal, Ince was one of four candidates in the votes alongside Erdogan. A survey earlier showed Erdogan lagging behind first place by more than five percentage points ahead of the election on Sunday. Members of the media and journalists have gathered at the Al Jazeera campus in Doha for an event marking one year since the killing of Shireen Abu Akhla. Audience members stood holding placards that read Justice for Shireen. <laughs> Abu Akhla was one of the most recognizable journalists covering Israeli-occupied territories and was shot dead on May the 11th last year during an Israeli raid in the West Bank city of Jenin. Her family say they are still waiting for justice. A year after my aunt was killed, um, we're still um, in so much pain. The past year was one of the most, if not the most devastating year that my family and I had to experience. Um, Shirin was killed nearly a year ago. And until this day, we still wake up in pain. We're still missing her. We still, um, uh, we're still suffering and trying to mourn her loss. Two people have been killed in a shooting at a Mercedes-Benz factory in southwestern Germany. A 53-year-old man entered the production hall at the plant in Singlefingen and opened fire, shooting two 44-year-old men. One of the victims died at the scene and the other died later in hospital. No one else was hurt. Police said security staff detained the suspect and handed him over to officers who arrested him without resistance. A van transporting oxygen gas canisters has exploded in a Milan street, injuring one person and setting nearby cars and motorbikes on fire. The city's mayor ruled out foul play and confirmed that no one had died in the incident. Firefighters quickly extinguished the blaze, which had sent clouds of thick black smoke into the sky. Eyewitnesses said the fire appeared to have spread to a nearby building, which was evacuated. A local school was also evacuated. And dog lovers gathered in San Diego in California to enter their furry animals into the annual puppy prom. Thank you, Aboriginal Lots of pampered pets dressed in glamorous outfits and sparkly costumes gathered to determine who was best dressed in the show. This year, Bear the Yorkshire Terrier dressed in a blue outfit with a gold crown and was awarded Doggy King, while Bitsy, another Yorkshire Terrier who had her own tiny car, snapped up the coveted Doggy Queen title. The puppy prom raises money to help the centre look after rescued and abandoned dogs. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.